What's going on YouTube? Just helping you out here. In this video, I will be looking at and giving you my first impression of the new 2024-2025 First Lego Week Submerged Challenge Set Field Mat. I encourage you to stay tuned to my YouTube channel as I expect to build my own robot and upload my ideas. Please excuse any background noise or variations in lighting during this uh, video. And with that said, I hope you enjoy the video. So let's take a look at the uh, mat this year. Very similar to last year, okay, we have on the left a launch area and on the right a launch area and a home area on the left and a home area on the right. Okay, so this year they've done the same thing as they've done the last couple years. We get two launch areas, two home areas. Um, actually gets more kids up at the table uh, at one time, so there's a little more involvement. It was, I think, kind of a, a good idea a, a couple years ago. And one of the other things it does for everyone is you no longer have to get the robot all the way across the field and back again to the same launch area, which is about twice as much work uh, as getting the robot just to one side to do uh, one of the missions. So they can start on the left, do a mission, end on the right, and then team on the right can set the robot out and do another mission from the right going out to the left or just coming right back to their particular um, launch area. Now, one of the things I did notice about this year's mat is the mat is about one inch shorter, not quite one inch shorter than it was last season. So you do have a little bit more room in the home area. So in these areas over here, we do have a little bit more room on each side. And, and what that's good for is typically when your robot comes back home uh, after a mission, if it goes into the home area or into the launch area, then you can touch your robot. So uh, a little bit more area in the home uh, on both sides gives you the opportunity to make a robot that's just a little bit bigger and have it actually fit in the home area. Okay, another thing we'll notice is all in here, all right, all in this area, we see all the various colors, all these ocean colors. Uh, they kind of blend together all over the place. I, I believe it's going to be a little bit difficult to use a color sensor to navigate. Uh, you can probably use a color sensor to pick up maybe between some of the lighter and darker shades, um, but it may be a little difficult to discern the different uh, colors on the mat this year. Um, the other thing that was kind of a little strange is every year they have, usually up in one of the corners, they have a compass. And that's kind of because they've always referred to the field as north, south, east, and west. So when they would mention in the instructions uh, or the field information about placing something somewhere, your robot has to do this or that, uh, they would mention by a compass directions. And this year it's not on there, so maybe they're navigating away from that because people are always saying left, right, top, and bottom. Not really sure, but I thought that was kind of strange because they always seem to have a compass. The other thing that becomes really obvious this year is you'll notice there's no real line following lines. Okay, In this year's mat, we have a couple lines up on the right. We have one here in the center at the top one at the center and the bottom. And they don't look like you can really line follow. Typically those lines are used for alignment lines. So I suspect that the missions that are at these locations will maybe be a little bit more difficult or maybe they're just a little bit more important. Uh, and this would allow you to actually get your robot up there, stop on the lines, maybe align it if you're using uh, two color sensors. So. Just a little strange, I think you're going to have to maybe rely on the, uh, on the gyro this year, uh, a little bit more so than other years. Uh, the Spike Prime, the gyro works pretty well. If you're using an EV3, that gets to be a challenge. The EV3 gyro is a little hit or miss. Uh, but if you're using the Spike, the gyro should work pretty well and should be able to navigate the field by either using the gyro or dead reckoning using some field elements or the, uh, the sides of the, the table. Um, the other thing you'll notice is there's a, a few black rings in the middle of the table here. There's a little rectangle. Usually there for maybe dropping a field element in for extra points. So usually uh, nothing starts in those, but you might have to grab, uh, you know, something on a ring and drop it in there. And if you watch the uh, unboxing video that we did recently, uh, you'll see that in some of the packs, there's the black rings. Some of them have mini figs. So I suspect that what we're going to have this year is similar to last year. 
they got away from the uh, flexible loops, went to the rigid loops, makes it easier to pick up. And I imagine that what you're going to have to do is maybe take something you pick up from somewhere on the field and place it into one of these circles or ovals on the field. Looking at the mat itself, we've got uh, over here we have a little thing that says science station on the right. So I guess whatever model is going to be over here uh, is going to represent something having to do with uh, uh, a science lab or uh, something about working with the animals uh, in the ocean. On the right hand side here, this looks pretty much like a coral reef all along in here. So I suspect most of the things that are going to be in this side would have something to do with coral reefs or uh, animals that, that would be in the coral reef or get stuck in the coral reef. Again, this is uh, kind of an interesting game as to this could be all about um, things that are in the sea, damage that's caused by uh, our current living situations uh, in the sea, things like plastic bottles that get stuck in things, could be about how to live in the ocean. We're not really sure yet. We don't have the game, but this kind of mat has a lot of things. So we've got the coral reef, we've got kind of the deeper sea section in the middle here. Um, kind of an interesting mat. The other thing is there appears to be more uh, open area this year in the mat than there is in some years. Um, what we have is mission models kind of all around the outside, and we have a couple mission models in the center, and I believe there's one at the bottom, or a couple here at the bottom. So we'll have some area through here, all around in here. It seems like it's a little bit more open than some of the other years. Um, you will notice that somewhere in here, like right in here and right down here, there's a couple small circles. Okay, and I think there's three of them on the field this year. The smaller circles usually have some kind of item in them that sometimes they say, oh, you want to make sure you don't move this. So if that's the case uh, with these couple circles that are in here in this area, you're going to find that maybe you have to navigate around them or what some people do is they'll take the mission model out and put it back later on so that they don't have to worry about moving around it. But again, it does seem like it's a rather open field this year. So looking at the mat, we have a mission model that's in here. We have one here, here, here. I suspect that what's up in here, if you look at some of the videos that are out there floating around on YouTube, there's the cooperation mission, which crosses here. Uh, and that looks like there's a little submersible that's on a, a bar that maybe uh, each team has to try to make move before the other team does. So I suspect that this is going to be critical for aligning your robot for the cooperation mission. Uh, then on the uh, right hand side we have I believe a mission model here, there's one here. The mission model here, I believe this is the shark that's standing up, so uh, this might be a little critical for alignment purposes or maybe actually have to place something in the shark's mouth or something like that. So again, these, these few areas here where we do have the alignment lines, I believe are going to maybe be a little bit more critical for you to uh, position your robot. And then we have another mission model looks here. Uh, one belongs, I guess, down here at the bottom. That's a boat, I believe, that just gets pushed across. Uh, there's another model in here, and then there's a couple larger ones in here. That's about it for this video. Feel free to check out all of our other LEGO videos in the playlist in the top left corner. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like, leave a comment if you have any questions or an idea for a future video, and lastly, don't forget to subscribe and tell your friends about my channel so I can grow and help more of you guys out. I'm just helping you out. See you in the next video.